<laughs> Y'all, this, this bitch went live tonight. Get up there sweating fucking <laughs> Crisco and goddamn motor oil and shit. Why the fuck is this bitch face so goddamn shiny? <laughs> like, throw sand on your face, bitch, or something. The fuck? See what the fuck this stupid bitch got to talk about. What's that finishing powder or something to dry it up a little bit? Nah, bitch, you, you need some goddamn, you just need to put your face down in some fucking sand. So what the fuck you need to do? I'm using that Urban Skin RX stuff. That shit work. Got my skin looking like, I don't know. <laughs> my skin be looking great. Great for what? What? I'm waiting. This goddamn oily face, handsome ass bitch sitting up here to talk about what? My skin be looking amazing, but right now that shit looking like it looked like the Ex Exxon Valdez uh, oil uh, spillage. What the fuck you look like? I don't know, a little oily a little bit. Let me see if I can give me some some. Uh... I can't believe you live from the hotel. What what what's What's your excuse this time? Because we know Big Kathy got a uh, rain man. So what, what the fuck did you do? Please don't tell me you're up here trying to pretend like you're somewhere else. Setting powder. I am on the road. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold the fuck. Shit. On the road. Where? What the fuck? Big Kathy got, got, got radio and you in there pretending like you on the road somewhere doing what? Dropping off grease? Ohio soon. Um, doing a show. Uh, working with some other content creators on a show. So I'll be in Ohio. Who the fuck is dumb enough to let your stupid ass host anything with them. I'll soon. Right now, I'm out of town doing absolutely. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> out of. Oh, shit. Fuck. Out of town? Touring? Touring what, bitch? What? Fuck you, Tori. Burger King, from the looks of your face. Something that looking like Jabba the fucking slut. Nothing I'm supposed to be recording, but my stuff ran out of power. So I got to, like, charge everything, like my phone, like my Canon. I got to charge it. So I was like, let me take a break. So anyway, I wanted to um, get on my channel right quick. I don't do live streams like that, like. I yeah, because you can't use your filters on here. So what you what you do? Th throw on some some uh, vegetable oil on your face and make it look like a filter. So I mean, I mean <laughs> what? You don't want nobody to know that your fat ass is five foot one all the way around, and obviously. You're in a fucking hotel. So you go, you go cab up every now and then to say, oh, I'm touring. You know, that's why I'm in this hotel. Bitch, you home. You don't got to be home. Hey, live streaming. I don't know why I hate live streaming, but. Because just like you sitting up there now, all, all oily and shit, fat as fuck. And stop, please stop tilting your head back, bitch. You you better take that chin and tuck it in your waistband. That shit is is damn near down to the goddamn flow. Matter of fact, your chin got a chin. <laughs> Most people like live streaming. Like everybody live stream all the time. I mean, cause we ain't got to lie about where we at, bitch. Trying to stay away from live streaming, even on other platforms like Instagram or TikTok. I could be live streaming, but I don't. Because they gonna see what you look like for real. 
Cause I noticed when you grab whatever the fuck it is you grab, you didn't stand up because, like Priest said, yo, yo, goddamn Tasmanian devil crumpled cereal box built ass don't want us to see that shit. Um, I'm deciding to live stream about damn femininity and masculinity because the reason why it's such a large topic on my social media platforms, bitch, you are a large topic. Fat bitch. It's because I have 50-50 audience. I have 50% men. I have 50% women everywhere I go. And I think TikTok is the only platform where it's like 80% women who are following me. But I Because they come over here, they're going to they gonna see the goddamn truth. That's why you're doing that fuck shit over there on TikTok. Because you make them three-minute videos and they, and they really can't see. The more that you talk, the more that those that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Um masculine and feminine energy is something that people are always talking about all the time and it boggles my motherfucking mind because it's like what's boggling my mind is since you in california why don't you just run to the beach and throw sand on your face because every time i touch my goddamn screen that goddamn oil on your face make my fucking thumb slippery men cannot stand when women say you know a real man does this a real man does that you know you ain't a you are a real man real man if you don't do xyz and they tell women you know you you can't raise a man um like people who tell me because i have a son and his father's not around i'm not going to be able to teach my son how to be a man because i'm you can't even teach that motherfucker how to go to the bathroom he four years old, still in fucking diapers. You can't even teach that little motherfucker how, how to talk or any goddamn thing. So, what? A woman, you know, things like that. Men say stuff like that all of the time. But then these same men will turn around and classify a woman as masculine because a woman doesn't fit what their definition of what femininity is or what a woman should be. And it's like such a such a double standard there. And I think that's the fault of women, because I think women have felt like because men are kind of physically stronger are usually physically, physically stronger than women, that we should be subservient to men and that whatever men. Bitch, you can't get a fucking man. So how the fuck are you an expert on men and relationships when you're not in a relationship? say about us is is correct or you know and for years men have like defined what it means to be a woman and it's difficult for me as a uh, a woman myself um to follow behind this why are you breathing so hard with your fat ass like that's a, that's some fat motherfucking shit how you stand still and sweat like the other fat motherfuckers yeah that's you. Instead of, um, I, I guess it's societal, like, to structure what people want society to be, so they tell women to be a certain way. I get it, but when I see femininity coaches teach... Uh, priest couldn't even tell you to wash your ass. Because you already know. In femininity... It's, it's discomfort, you know? I feel a sense of discomfort, because it, it seems... In is that why your pussy was thinking? Because being feminine is discomfort? No, bitch, that was your pussy screaming for help. Get right, because it's like you're telling women to be monolithic. You're telling women to do a series of behaviors. And usually these series of behaviors are what's appealing to men, is to, is to attract more men. Now, I know women want to attract more men, but I think it's a mistake to try to. Because, I mean... Every day as a woman, just, just being a woman walking down the street, we attract so many men on the regular. Like we could be just going to the gym. Oh, uh, we know your ass ain't going to the goddamn gym. You can stop that lie right there, bitch. No. No. Bitch, I said no. Going to the grocery store, going get some gas, you know, charging a Tesla. <laughs> 
No, no, fuck you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Oh shit! <laughs> oh my god! Oh shit! No, the fuck you did not just say <laughs> charter the Tesla. <laughs> oh shit! Who Tesla you charging, bitch? Cause the damn show ain't yours. <laughs> You had that motherfucker for what? Whole two weeks before you had to turn that bitch in? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you know, going on vacation or something like that, and everywhere we go, some man will, you know, try to get at you. You know, so so as a woman, it's like you really don't have to try that hard to get the attention of men. Because men... Rich, you've been trying to get a man's attention for damn near five years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, know, <laughs> you try to rush the relationship along because uh, he's slow and you dumb as fuck. Y'all had radio. So fuck you me. <laughs> you can't even attract the slow nigga who got you pregnant. Bitch. And make themselves so accessible to women. It's like men are so easy to get. You really don't have to go out. If men are so easy to get, why the fuck can't priests help your son talk? I'm waiting. A way to be like this feminine goddess in order to appeal to men. Because men just make themselves so accessible. So I wonder where this definition of femininity or this this desire to want to be whatever that um, definition of femininity is to me it's not that they're teaching femininity i think it's they're teaching sensuality and i posted a sensuality video on my youtube channel um maybe like a month ago and a lot this bitch is sweating bacon bits tartar sauce all kind of shit <laughs> A lot of women don't know a lot about sensuality. So I think a lot of the femininity coaches are, are teaching these women how to be sensual, how to be more attractive to men and be, you know, what men want women to be. Not really teaching femininity because femininity. Y'all, this is what happens when you take the Snapchat filter off, the Instagram filter off. Every time that bitch tilt her head up. Her fucking hairline disappeared. Bitch, your hairline go all the way back to slavery. Like my hair, hairline. I got an excuse. Because somebody threw some sand on your ass, put a wet wipe on you, let that wig fall off, bitch, you probably look like me. We get to decide what femininity is. We get to define what it means to be a woman. Just like... Is that why you, again, is that why uh, your pH was off? Because... You didn't decide that that was being feminine, taking care of your pussy. You must have fell asleep during that lecture. You know, men don't like when women say what we say. A good man is this. A good man is that. We don't like you. And them other uh, handsome ass frog face looking bitches too. You know, each woman is it, it's kind of subjective about what a good man is anyway. Because, I mean, I, I see some things that some women... How would you know what a good man is and you can't get one? Been like in a man and sometimes I'm like, why does she like that? About to, like, why? Why is that appealing? I just don't. Why are you breathing so hard, you fat bitch? Y'all ever notice how fat motherfuckers just be breathing hard for no reason? Fuck. See what I what I noticed that I'm not seeing a lot of lately as far as like content. We're just talking about like just TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. I'm not seeing a lot of women who are like happily married or happily in relationships. Because they're not over there on TikTok listening to the old shit. A woman in a happy relationship will not be listening to Job of the Slut over there lying her ass off. And 
I wish that more women who were happier in relationships would be more vocal about their Why? You have to get on this motherfucker every goddamn day, bitch. You, you think a, a wife or a kept woman is going to hop on here just to tell you how great it is to be married so you could jump up there with your bitter ass and say, marriage isn't everything. <laughs> situations like every day I get on social media and I see just women just complaining about being single, you know. Every day. Instead of getting that little slow motherfucker hooked on Phonics book to help him read, let alone talk, you won't hear. The fuck? Oh, just got cheated on. You know, just just angry or upset or crying because they can't find somebody. Which is exactly like you. You mad and bitter because you're getting cheated on. Bitch, you're not getting cheated on. You was never getting cheated on. You were in relationships with motherfuckers who were not in relationships with you. <laughs> it's, it's always like a gender war. And that's why on my YouTube channel, I always tell Nah, bitch, don't do that. Don't do that. Ain't no goddamn gender war because you're going to pull out the whole defend women, defend black women, just defend shit card when you ain't got nothing else to, to use. So there is no fucking gender war. If that's the case, why do women and men want to throw a bucket of dirty mop water on your stupid ass? Huh? Huh, bitch? People, um, when you come to my YouTube channel... Keep in mind, nobody comes here. I just came here to laugh my ass off. It's not a gender war happening here. Like, I think for so many years, I was on YouTube and I would have to argue back and forth with the um, Manosphere. Hey, Tiffany, happy. you didn't have to argue back and forth with the Manosphere. You did that to get attention because you are everything that the Manosphere represents needs to be weeded out. You are the stereotypical, bitter, delusional baby fucking mom. Happily divorced. See, that's what I'm talking about. Happily divorced. <laughs> oh, yeah, you happy because that bitch divorced because misery loves company. But at least she was married. For real. Dumbass. <laughs> Happily divorced. I've been seeing that. Like, like, women are happy to be single. And that's good. But at the same time, it's like, okay, is this, is, is. Them bitches ain't happy. No, they not. Women being happy, single, going to eventually warp into, like, balanced unions with men. Because I think everything was so. If you're so happy being single, like you claim, where's your balance union? You couldn't get balanced with a slow nigga. You couldn't get uh, you could couldn't get that shit with all the other married motherfuckers you fuck with. You couldn't get that shit with with uh, B Rad, who you never met in person, but y'all in a full grown relationship. <laughs> Let's go. Imbalanced between men and women that it was making miserable men, women miserable, and men didn't really care because they felt like because I'm a man, if I treat you a certain type of way, I'm your man. You gonna have to put up with it. You know, and people were so hell bent on staying with somebody for the kids or staying with somebody because they don't want to get the. You were so hell bent on staying with somebody. You took a married nigga and, and purposely got pregnant by him. But you act like we don't know that shit. Divorce to start over or they feel like they're too old to find someone new, you know, so I, those days are like over. So I want you can't even find someone old because you always try to reach back to motherfucker from back in the day and don't know I want to fuck with you. Dumbass. Wonder, with women being more comfortable with being independent, being comfortable with um, just making their own money. I wonder, will that one day shift into like this this balance where it's finally unity between men and women? I seen this clip of Goldie Hawn. I just just recently, it's it's an old clip though. It's not like a new clip. 
Can you give any stories about people you've actually met and talked to? You keep naming all these celebrities and shit who, who when they see your ass pull up, they either going to call the police or tell you, hey, uh, that house ain't going to clean itself because you look like a fucking help. But it's an old clip. She was on Oprah Winfrey's show. And I seen her on TikTok um, like earlier today. And she was telling women years ago how comfortable she feels with the idea that she can choose not being married. Because before women... Right. You can't choose that. I mean, you had to get a nigga's name tattooed on your ring finger. Uh, you, you had to took took a picture in a wedding gown that no fucking wedding was ever going to be used for that motherfucker. So, which is it? We couldn't choose that because we wouldn't have nowhere to live. We didn't have money. You ain't got nowhere to live. You're in a fucking hotel. You're not on tour. <laughs> You're not on tour, bitch. You're at home. You gave radio to Big Kathy so you can sit up here in this hotel room and pretend like you're on the fucking road. We know you at home. That's why you ain't panning that camera around. We, we couldn't do what we wanted to do, so we had to like go out there and get a husband. Hey, Mo, we had to go out there and get a husband, and now it's just like, well, we really don't have to. And I think the fact that... It's not a matter of have to. It's because you can't, dummy. We don't have to. It's kind of scaring the shit out of men. You know, because now men have to do something other than provide financially. Like, they have to really put forth the energy to be a decent... Oh, they do. And they're in full-blown relationships. You wouldn't know because you never really been in one. ...husband or, or a decent boyfriend. You know? I don't know. I just feel like... <sighs> Everybody's so comfortable with being single. Like, I'm so comfortable with being single. And you ain't got no choice but to be single because they can get tired of uh, coming to see you in that goddamn extended state. And you got that little autistic motherfucker running around squealing and shit. I got like a message from this one guy um, on Instagram yesterday. And he was like, so Of course, because you're not going to get a message from them at Starbucks or Walmart. You got to log on to have interaction. Let me see if I can read it. He was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it to y'all. Because he was dead ass serious. Hold on, this is for He was dead ass serious. Let me tell you shit. Let me see. Um, where is that? He was like, ma'am, you need to get you a man. Hold up. And I honestly don't feel like I need a man here. No, he meant... You don't need to get you a man. He meant you need to get you some sand to throw in your fucking face and dry the damn oil up. He said, um, you're literally going to die alone if you continue the path you're you goddamn right. on. Do you really want that? I don't know you personally at all. I come across your videos and post on YouTube from time to time. And I can see the barrier that you're putting up. And I don't know if I was sent to you for a reason or not. Just let all the pain and hurt inside you go. Stop holding on to it. I truly hope. That's a uh, low key cue for kill yourself. Hope you find love again. We all have our seasons of regret and mourning. It's time to find love. You can't even find that little autistic motherfucker's speech. Move on and love again. Hold on, wait. It's time to move on and love again. Give yourself permission to move on. You deserve it. That's him telling me this. Give yourself permission to move on. You, you so proud of somebody sending something to your ass. You got to show the goddamn screen. Deserve it, right? So I tell him, I think men are more afraid of dying alone than women are. Like, I think... No... <laughs> nah, bitch. Nah, let's get away with that shit. We feel more comfortable with being by ourselves because it's really not that deep. <laughs> you know, I think that's why men say, "Oh, you're gonna die." Yeah, it is. <laughs> that's what that little lie laugh. 
<laughs> oh, it's not that deep. That <laughs> lying ass. Oh, oh you're gonna dial because men men need to feel needed. You know? No, we don't. You need to feel needed, bitch. But at the same time, it's like anytime. Well, I'm not even going to say any time. I'm going to just speak for myself because I'm not going to speak for every woman, even though I know a lot of women experience this. But every time I've been vulnerable around a man or, or behaved as if I needed him, I came off as needy. And that was not appealing. Um, no, but you are not appealing in any way, shape or form. And please dry your face up for them braids. Slide out your goddamn hair. I said to this man that um honestly i don't need a room full of people while i'm on my deathbed to feel better about dying my two kids will miss me that's all that matters and i said if letting go of my personal pain was that easy nobody missed you when you had that fake dirt nap don't you think i would have let it go already that's like asking someone who broke their leg to stand up and run already i'm taking my time and yeah it's five we know your fat ass ain't running nowhere but to Krispy Kreme when that hot light come on. Five years is a long time to still be healing, but I need it for me. No man will want me like this, and I wouldn't be any good for any man if he took me as I ever am right now. All I'll do is get played all over again. That's what I put. Um, yeah, Golden Blade, I gained a lot of weight. Um, you ain't never lied. Uh, you was trolling <laughs> you was trolling I talked about my weight on my channel plenty of times but you want me to go over it again or well, you was just trolling you thought I was going to have like a, um, get mad I'm not mad I'm not mad at my weight um, I had my son that had postpartum depression uh, you had depression because your plans to trap that slow nigga didn't work. Um, I'm not bottom shelf because of it. <laughs> yes, the fuck you are. You are under the fucking shelf with your fat ass. <laughs> Dusties. When y'all do stuff like that, like when you come in people's comment sections and you say stuff like that to provoke a person, it says a lot about who you are as a person. You mean a truth sayer? Anyone who calls you on your bullshit is dusty and a troll. Because number one, you hide behind a profile. You don't show who you really are. You're hiding behind that goddamn desk. Because you ain't finna stand up for shit. Like I said, you five foot five all the way around. You don't say your name. You just come at other people's profiles. I mean, uh, live streams and comment sections and you're hiding. And that one thing I ain't hiding, bitch. Right there is so cowardly because you can't take accountability and responsibility for what you post. And you know damn well if anyone could see you or knew what your name was and you said something like that, you wouldn't you would you probably would be afraid because just like you afraid if somebody found out where the fuck you at. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you the one scared, bitch, of somebody finding you at it, where, where you at? Because anybody on this side find your ass, we gonna turn into a, a goddamn hairstylist. Like pop, 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 pop. Change your fucking hairstyle. You can't say stuff like that to everybody. Like not everybody is the person that's gonna remain calm if you say something. You are everybody with your big ass. Something like that to their face. <laughs> Some people will shoot you in your face after you say something. No, you should have shot yourself in the head for real. <laughs> Shit like that still. Um, but I'm not like I'm not um I don't know upset about my weight per se. Um Yes, you are. That's why you wear that ratty ass, gray ass cardigan to try to hide this shit. All it looks like is somebody took a big ass hippo, threw a lace front on it, and that fucking cardigan. I feel like I went through something. You feel like eating? Something. 
Yeah, bitch, you went through something, all right. You went through the goddamn drive through I had my son. I had postpartum depression. I had therapy and counseling because I was dealing with what I was dealing with with my son's father. And I gained weight through that process. You gained weight because you can't wait to eat. And sometimes I feel like I'm so comfortable being this way or weighing. So it's Priest's fault that, that you fat as fuck? This much because it protects me. You know what I mean? It protects me from just random men walking up to me trying to holler and lying and pretending to be something that they ain't. Because I was... Like you? That's the epitome of you. Lying, trying to be something you ain't. You ain't on tour. You ain't charging no Tesla. <laughs> I'm still a beautiful woman, but I was a model for a long time, so I had <laughs> modeling what, bitch? You're built like a fucking McGriddle. What are you? What are you modeling? A nice body. I was slim, you know. I was 135 pounds, and like when you photoshopped your arm out a couple of them pictures. Every man from within a damn 200 mile radius of me was trying to holler. <laughs> 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 Oh fuck! Every <laughs> man was in a two hundred. <laughs> what the fuck, bitch? Are you for real? <laughs> like being a woman that's very, very attractive is very difficult to be. But when you're dealing with men, because every man will try to holler at you. And they will do anything to get with you. They will say anything. They will lie. They will manipulate. They do. Bitch, I want the names and social security numbers of all three of them niggas who tried to come from 200 miles away to get with your ass. So many things just to be able to say they had you. And then once. Nah, bitch, all I got to say to you is I'm married. One fuck. They had you. Because they don't want someone else to want you, they try to ruin your reputation. In Bitch, we want somebody, anybody to want your ass. Your own kid don't even want your ass. It's probably why the nigga can't talk. He just ain't talking to your stupid ass. Process. And that has happened to me. And so, since that happened to me, I've been kind of hesitant about dating. And so I think between me being hesitant about dating... My son's father, um, my postpartum depression, things like that, and me gaining weight, I think it's kind of like comforting me being fat. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, bitch, see, the key to getting better is being fruitful and accepting things. I'm glad that you have accepted that you're a fucking swamp donkey. I'm so glad. I am 220. Hold up. <laughs> oh, shit. Hold up, bitch. <laughs> oh, fuck. Bitch. I'm six foot four. And I weigh 220 pounds. You're five foot one and weigh 220 pounds. <laughs> that's the biggest I've ever been I am 220 pounds and that shit is like and you sweating some of that shit off because it's all over your face it's, it's not making me miserable or anything I'm just like I can't believe I'm it is making you hungrier 220 pounds but at the same time I don't care <laughs> yes you do because if you did care you would stand up if you did care, you wouldn't be using all them goddamn filters. I don't care. Thank you for saying that, Vanessa. Um, I, I went through a very stressful, it was very stressful. And then my mother, like, think about this. I want y'all to think about this. If anybody's been watching me for a long time, you understand this. But if you're new to my channel and you're just now watching me, 2016 was a stressful year because I had a beef with a 
another male content creator because you know the black man is fear no bitch that was a one-way beef from you to him anything to get a nigga's attention it was on here and this content creator this male content creator was tormenting me so he was not tormenting you bitch you kept talking about him he was having people harass me that was in 2016 so that was a stressful year then 2017 came i met my son's father okay me and my son's father started dating and then the men from that same manosphere came and tried to destroy my relationship with me and my son nah bitch no you, you act like motherfuckers don't have shit recorded you act like motherfuckers don't don't listen to shit nobody program priests to do anything because if that's the case why the fuck you ain't programmed to come back he saw through your goddamn bullshit. That's what the fuck that was. His father. So I had to go through that, me breaking up with my son's father and being pregnant. Then on top of that, he. You didn't break up with him. That nigga left. He was going around making everybody think I was his mistress. Okay, so. Uh, when you're fucking a married guy, if mistress is too offensive a term, would you prefer side chick? Come rag? Pump dump. I mean, you know, it's, it's a lot of titles of that shit to call something that's fucking a married man. I'm dealing. I'm dealing with the the black man is fearing and harassing me. I'm dealing with a breakup with somebody. Ain't nobody harassing you, bitch. That I thought I was gonna spend the rest of my life with and marry. I'm pregnant at the same time, and I got to deal with the harassment of people. And and I'm not talking about just a handful of people harassing me. I'm talking about hundreds of people harassing me. No, they were reacting to you. Motherfuckers not dis not agreeing with your ass and you putting all the information up and then they start trying to put their foot on your goddamn neck, bitch. Don't now nah, don't don't try to goddamn uh what's this revisionist history you trying to do? They're all men. Okay, let that sit with you, so Oh no. It was mostly women coming at your ass. Twenty sixteen, I'm stressed. Twenty seventeen, I'm extra set stressed. Twenty eighteen, I had my son. Okay, I had my son. Right after I had my son, I had postpartum depression. I spent two years in postpartum depression. So you got 2019 postpartum depression. If you spent two years postpartum depression, eating ho hos, ring dings, ding dongs, and fucking bear claws and shit, maybe that's time for you. Did this life on earth shit ain't for you? 2020 comes. All right, 2020 comes. I'm still getting harassed by the black manosphere. Okay, 2020 comes, suddenly pandemic happens. All right, then a rumor that I committed suicide happens. So wasn't a rumor, bitch. You did that shit to get fucking views and it didn't work. So stop. I log off the internet. I'm off the internet for five months. Take a break. Come back. Got to deal with the fact that people are starting to realize, oh, yeah, she's alive. The rumor that was spread that she... That you spread. Committed suicide is... A lie. Was she lying? Who did this? Who did that? Suddenly rumors all starting up back over again. So I got to deal with that. All right. Then my mother. You ain't got to deal with shit, bitch. Just keep your ass offline. Gets cancer. I was like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> you going to let up? Universe? You know? So it was year after year after year. So you got 16 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. That's seven years of stress. That you chose. Okay. So in that process of me trying to keep myself together through that, I'm eating for comfort. Every goddamn thing. Now, now that I don't do that anymore because it's kind of wearing down now, I don't eat for comfort. Then why are you still fat as fuck? anymore like i used to eat after i had my son i was eating like all the time candy and i never used to eat candy i never used to eat candy after i had my son hold on is this really a fat bitch saying that she don't like candy you were fat before the fucking baby i was eating candy i was eating bacon like i didn't really eat bacon like that if i ate bacon it was turkey bacon i was eating fried chicken Never used to eat fried chicken. I was eating TV dinners. Never used to do that because I used to cook. 
That's because you live in a hotel and you ain't got no stove, so you got to eat TV dinners. All the time. So those four things in itself just blew me up. Then juice. I started drinking juice because my son drank juice. Because he a kid, right? He drank juice. Fat motherfuckers always got an excuse for why they fat as fuck. So you gonna blame the juice for this shit? So I'm drinking juice. So think about that accumulating and I'm not exercising. I'm not going anywhere. I can't really exercise like... Because you live in a fucking hotel. I want to because my body ain't gone back to normal after giving birth at 38. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... You chose that shit. Giving birth at 38 is very different <laughs> to giving birth. Yeah, because you old as fuck. In your 20s. So my body, my body didn't go back to normal, just, just regular, like, what it's normally supposed to do, like my legs. It's you were shaped like a beanbag chair before the baby. So I'm working properly until like two years after that. So now my body, I'm finally starting to, now, finally starting to get back to the person that I was before all of uh, A less fat version of you? That stuff happened to where I am, I don't know, just finding who I was, you know, so. You need to find an apartment to put that little motherfucker in. Yeah, I, that's why I gained weight. And I'm, and I'm trying to lose it. And I know people. Traveling what? You keep working out your bed. You, uh, you, you, you right foot driving Uber all day, huh? Putting the pedal on that gas and, the, and that brake. That's the only thing you working out. Expect me to be beautiful all the time and be slim all the time, but that's not the reality of my life. It's not. You ain't never lied. Beautiful and slim is not the reality of your life. Keep going. I'm fat. You know what I'm saying? As hell. <laughs> like, and I gained weight because I was so depressed. So you still depressed, bitch? You was fat before. Yeah, you know, I just, it just happened. Uh, my mother, speaking of my mother, uh, you're going to only get good vibes from my channel. Girl, is that a guy? You're only going to get good vibes from my channel. Thank you for naming your channel. <laughs> Thank you. Um, take care of my mother full time and take care of my son full time. It was hard. Like that was. A yeah, because it's your first time being a parent. Rough. Like last year was so hard. I had a really rough year last year and. It's starting to get better, you know. It, it feels better. Me and my mother was wondering what happened to your mother. Wanted to ask you. And my mother finally got over, like, like going through chemo and radiation with my mom was hard for me. Like, a lot of, no, nobody in my family was helping me. Like, nobody in Detroit, but. Nobody in your family was helping you because it's you. During my mother's chemotherapy and radiation, nobody came to see my mother. No one came. Because they don't fuck with y'all. Came to help me take care. No, because you're there. Her nothing. Not my sister, nothing. And it really hurt me deeply because I remember calling my sister crying. Just like when you killed yourself and nobody gave a fuck. Because <laughs> I was like watching my mother die. I don't know if you guys know what it's like to watch someone who goes through chemotherapy and radiation. But it's like to watch, it, it, it be killing them. So to see my mother be this fun person who plays with my son and laughs all the time and jokes and, you know, going too on herself all the time. I'm having to pick her, uh, clean up, throw up and shit. And she's falling all over the place. It was just so bad. Like, it was just so bad because that's. Then why are you putting her business out there? Just. It, it's it, if it was just me and my mom let's just say it was me and my mom and I didn't have any kids and I had to take care of her like she, when she was like that and going through chemo dropping her off picking her up doing all this stuff right it would have been easier but because I had my son and my son four so imagine having a toddler right who can't talk at the same time you are the sole caregiver for your mom who's going through chemotherapy. Yeah, it kind of sounds like a parent, don't it? And radiation. And I called my sister and I was just crying. And I just begged her to come to California to help me. And she didn't come. Because you were there. 
and it hurt me, right? And for a long time, my mother thought I was mad at my sister just to be mad. And I'm like, no, this is not some sibling rivalry. This is me upset because I called my sister when I really needed her and she didn't come. So nobody helped me. And what I went through mentally and emotionally with that is something that I've had been having to deal with for the past couple of months and all of the feelings. It's times that I done got on social media and did my TikTok videos and shit because, you know, that's what I'm most probably all day. You see people arguing back and forth trying to help y'all get through y'all stuff, you know. A relationship counselor who ain't in no relationship. <laughs> yeah, okay. I wish people would be a little bit more sentimental about what happens with me in my life. Because you lie about every goddamn thing. But when you are who I am, I'm a life coach, you know. I... <laughs> I'm sorry, that's, it. that's funny as fuck, bitch. I give other people advice. I am the shoulder other people lean on. So it's hard for me to come on social What people? Media and talk about all the stuff that I, I've been through. Um, Brenda, your body went through instant energy demand. I feel your pain from sadness a little bit. Because, I mean, and, and like I said with the guy that sent me the message. Look at my son. So cute. So cute. <laughs> what would be cute is if he could form a sentence. <laughs> um, well, the guy that sent me the message, he it, he saw something it's in one of my videos. I think it's when I talk about my son's father. When I talk about my son's father, I, I still have a level of sadness because it hasn't gone away. I don't know why. I honestly don't know. Because, I mean, I'm the type of person, it takes me a long time to get over someone anyway. And I think a lot of people... And I'm going on my fifth year. <laughs> and I'm surprised I've gone five years, you know. They put so many chemicals in food nowadays. And I'm following you for a month or so. I love how oh, you articulate God, your emotions. Rambling. I'll be reading your book when I finish a couple of more books. I knew I would sell, but the way that I'm selling now is different. Speaking of my book, I got one right. <laughs> Buy my book, y'all. I put pictures in it. That's me and my son. I put pictures in it because no one does that. <laughs> like, no one does it. I did it. Still showing them tired ass pictures of priests who ain't ever coming back. But you ain't got no pictures of Damo in there. Because I wanted to be different. I wanted it to be. Oh, it's definitely different. That's the most different pamphlet I've ever seen in my life. Just different. So I put pictures in it, but I made the font big. I just, I made it. Yeah, you made it big so the book could be bigger. A quick read. Oh, it's definitely a quick read. I read that book when I was taking a piss. Because what I had to say was interesting. Um, how I ended up. How's it interesting when you regurgitate the same bullshit all the fucking time? Making the money that I made and leaving Atlanta. It's an interesting story. Like it, the way No, you beg for donations to get to California. Stop lying. He did. I didn't even get into detail. Um I've been a CNA and I have done hospice. My dad told me not to go back because I was emotionally attached. Yeah. I can see how you could do that. And what it does. Like, she fine now, but man, she better now. She didn't die. She didn't die. She better now. She couldn't walk. Like, it got so good to be on a cane. But for a long time, we just had to push her in a wheelchair, and she couldn't stand up or nothing. Negative. Yeah. Okay, Brenda. Brenda, you said you won't say that it makes them mean. However, it shifts the negative state of mind. Yep. That's how she was. But she was mean as shit. Well, she was mean as shit to myself. Yeah, because you was everywhere. Uh, I, she was so mean it almost broke up like our family that's how mean she was to me I, I was like and, and it was messing up yeah cause she's sick of that shit here you come with a goddamn baby that you didn't goddamn want trying to push it off on her like you pushed Damo off on Andre hell yes be mean to y'all motherfuckers her mental state like, like I don't know if y'all know but you get like chemo brain you get you. 
It, it, it ain't chemo brain, bitch. It's, it's, oh my God, how the, why didn't I swallow this bitch? Why didn't this bitch end up in a napkin? So the fuck she thinking? You bring it different. So she was forgetting stuff. She was doing stuff like, and my son is little. So you can't like leave medicine around. She would leave medicine, dropping medicine all over the floor. And it's like, he just put his mouth. And I, and I said to her, it, yeah, because y'all in that little bitty ass hotel. We go to the hospital because my son done picked up some of your medicine and swallowed it, and we got to go to the hospital. They t your mama should have swallowed you. Taking him, you know what I mean? Like, like that's it for me. So we would get into arguments about that. Like, I'm like, mom, you need to like tell me so I can just administer your medicine. So I started administering it for her. And then one day she got like real sick. I had to call the ambulance. I, I done called the ambulance for my mother in the past year. The ambulance and the time before we took on the ambulance the last time myself. But I, the Lone Ranger thing, I'd rather be by myself because I. You by yourself because ain't nobody else for the fall into your bullshit. I don't want to harm another man. Like, I don't want what priests did to me to harm another man. And I want to focus on my son. Like, I, I, I think my son. What do you want to focus on that little motherfucking bitch? You should have been focused on his ass. And needs a good ass mother if he's going to have. And he still ain't got one. Not have a father. Like, if he's going to be fatherless, I think he needs to have a good ass mother. And I'd rather focus on him. And I'll be glad when you find him a good ass mother. Him instead of focusing on finding another man to be with but at the same time it's like my son need a father figure so do i keep dating or what if i pick the wrong guy again because i picked his father and his father was wrong so what if i picked him this is what i be thinking in my mind i can give everybody else advice all day about relationships i've helped so many people when it where are these two people who you helped Please give me the name and social security numbers of both them people you helped so I can tell them how fucking stupid they is. Comes to my relationships, it's like the universe is purposely putting me through like these experiences that are. Yeah, because you're in so it. So I can teach other people how to do shit the right way in a relationship. Because it's, it's, I don't know, it's like. You can't even teach your son how to talk. How are you going to teach anybody any goddamn thing? It's just how the universe works to where I'm so good at relationships. I can teach everybody else, if but I can't so, do it for myself. If you're so good in the goddamn relationship, bitch, how come you're not in one? I can't explain it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you for praying for my mother, though. I really, I really appreciate that. Um, 11 is a long, that is a long time. Straight up. I think that's when I started taking it more serious, though, because I, cause I don't know how to use it. I definitely... Monique.com. Um, yeah, my mother is like... I don't know. T where's Tiffany? Hold up. Tiffany, thank you for your insight. I never thought about it over there, Tiffany. Tiffany, wait. <sighs> that's some real shit. Don't try to shelter other people. We choose what we want to see on social media. That's true. Uh. That's true. I'm glad you said that, because... A lot of times when people see me now, like they see me as the life coach. Who see you as a life coach? They see me as, you know, the entrepreneur and the investor. And they think. Investing in what? All this shit is in your fucking head. Just like a bucket of chicken is in your head. Oh, you switched up. You know, you changed. And I'm like, nah, this is who I've been this whole time. Far and back. You will see life coaching stuff, positive stuff. I've been doing this since my early 20s. But for some reason, people had this definition of who I was in their mind because of something somebody else told them. Oh, it ain't nothing nobody else told us, bitch. You tell us. It wasn't because they was watching my content. It was because other people was making content about me. So they believed that the content that the other people was making about me was who I was. It is. Instead of just coming to see who I am. Who I am. Uh, people try to you block them as soon as they don't agree with you. Or if they ask you a question to call you on your bullshit, you call them a troll and all this other shit. So, 
what I've been spending the last year or so doing is showing Eating. people more of who I truly am and of me being a mistress, right? The whole, you was a mistress, you was a mistress. Well, we talk about... You was. Uh, Priest, my son's father, or we talk about Chris Law. Oh my God, who is we? We don't talk about them. You do. The fuck? Chris Law and the people still come in my comment section. Oh my God, leave that man alone. You you want to make the people there so they can react to you as leave that man the fuck alone. Talking about Chris Law. Somebody came to my comment section the other day and asked me, was Chris Law my baby daddy? I was like, fuck no. I would never have kids by Chris Law. Anyway, Chris, when, when I was... That's because he don't want you. Dealing with Chris, he wasn't even married yet. But for some reason, people call me Chris Law's mistress. Why are you keep bringing this shit back up? So, so what, you, the, the traction going down, so you're trying to mention uh, Chris again? Like, <laughs> he was married when I was with him. Nah, he was dealing with me before he got married, and then he ended up getting married. We know all this, oh, yeah. Because he was in, you know what I'm saying? Because I think with Chris, it was like 2010, 2009, or something like that, right? And then my son's father and I met in 2017. So that's a big-ass gap. But for some reason, people... And you had a few abortions in between there, too. I think Chris and Priest, the same person. And they not <laughs> like they not. No, they don't. After that, he didn't. He didn't get back with his wife. He was talking to me about some other girl he was dating. He was dating some other chick. What's they got to do with you? He was telling me about this other chick, and I'm like, what? alone. That's one thing. But every day, my son is a constant reminder of his father, because he's a boy. You know, he don't look like priest no more. Justice look just like me. He looked just like me. I don't even see priests in my son. Like, I don't, I don't see it. But I think the part that I'm hurting from is that my son doesn't have a father. And because of you, that hurts me so much because I grew up without mine. And I, I hate that for him. And it's my fault because I had a baby yep. by a dude that didn't love me. And I didn't even know. Uh. The swingers lifestyle, working at the swingers club. Uh, I don't know. I'm just a, I'm a celebrity guidance counselor. <laughs> <laughs> celebrity. <laughs> That's all I can think of. I got the dates mixed up because I started watching it. It was him. I can't remember the video, but she was talking about dating nothing. What? A person who can be transparent with actually working on themselves. I can't. I can't be preaching to y'all about being authentic. Uh, authentic. Uh, I had a threesome, and they was like, "How are you telling people that you did that? I can't believe you did that." I was like, "Well, y'all get on social media and see fake shit all day. It's bad enough. I gotta put on a filter, makeup, hair." Clothing. Yeah, you you yeah, you gotta put all this shit on so you can stop looking like Danny Glover. Looking all this stuff just to get y'all to listen. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's bad enough I gotta do all that fake shit. At least let me I'm glad you finally admitted that you do fake shit. Me be transparent when I'm sharing who I am. So I wear nerdy things, I do nerdy things, and I'm walking around, I have my glasses on and my hair up in a bun. And I'm dressed down and I'm chilling. And I mean, I don't, you know how in the city you live in, people might flex with their cars or what they're wearing, their jewelry, stuff like that. Here in Northern California, the flex. Oh my God, is it? I, I was waiting when you go put, use the here in Northern California thing. Here we go. Is, do you have land? Do you own your own home? You have none of that. Um, do you have a business? How, how big is your family? How healthy is your family? And they really are big on community. How healthy is your family? How healthy is two fat bitches and an autistic baby? I bitch, I don't know. Here, So when people go out, they go out and, and it's a bunch of them. Because it's because people. All right. This is what they do. 
because you have to realize I'm I'm I live around Asian people like Indians and Chinese and Japanese and I live around Russian people. So you're basically here you go again with your insecure colorist ass keeps saying, oh, I don't live around black people. Oh, OK. No, black people don't live around you. And none of them Chinese, Asian or Russian people would have you anywhere near them. While you ride past taking pictures of their mansion, posting that shit. Uh, Hispanic people, they're all big on family. And we're talking generations. So they all come together, different generations. And it's just me, my mom, my, my son, and my um, daughter, right? When people see us, it shocked them because I ain't got no husband. Our family ain't big as fuck. No, it, your family is big as fuck. We know you big as fuck. It shocks them because, like you said, ain't nothing but Chinese, Indian, Russians, and Mexicans. It shocks them because, uh, somebody called 911 these picking any. You know what I'm saying? Because you look at them and they got all their family members here. They got the big ass family and everybody just together. They don't go out to clubs and stuff like that. They do like. And they don't hop on YouTube all day making videos about a motherfucker who don't want them. Community events. Like they. So it's just, I don't know. You can, oh no, Vanessa, oh no. You can marry in the future. Your life is over. No. Your son can possibly gain a father who would love him more than life itself. Listen, I'm never getting married. Um, that, that's the goddamn truth. Um, for, for starters, let me tell you why I'm not getting married. Let me tell you why. And it's my fault. I'm a social media personality. Right. <laughs> the black manosphere. Bitch, if you don't like a bitch, put that either put that chin, that extra chin up in a ponytail or tuck it in between your goddamn titties or put it in your waistband. Cause that 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 chin is hanging on for dear life. Kinda made it weird for me to wear if I'm on a date with a guy, he usually knows who I am already. Seriously doubt that. And he has this preconceived notion about who I am. So if we end up on the date. <laughs> the stuff that he's talking about is this weird manosphere language. You mean he's telling the truth? You know, that, that weird red pill incel language. And I'd be like, you sure you want to have that kind of conversation with somebody like me? <laughs> um, you know, watch true crime like Oxygen, A&E. I watch Kendall Ray on YouTube. I watch a lot of true crime. And, and, and go go start watching true crime stuff. A boutique, right? Where I sell my celibacy rings. <laughs> and... Uh, my books. I just started selling clothes on there. So I want to show y'all my. Oh, shit. Don't worry with that bullshit. Or selling my celibacy rings. Because I told the story of why I wear a celibacy ring. And just telling that story alone. It made people buy my celibacy rings. Bullshit. Ain't nobody buying that goddamn celibacy ring. How you gonna buy a celibacy ring from a bitch who done had five abortions, got a slow kid, had it by a slow married nigga? Who gonna put... Obviously, you're fucking a lot. Or you were. Ran a train on you at the swingers party, but you got a nerd to wear a celibacy ring. Okay. And people... Like, I used to have um, my lace front units up there. Because I wear like they don't hate it. I think they like my hair better when I straighten it. So I have been straightening my hair and went to order on YouTube of me as people are other places. Because I think because the black uh, sector of this of YouTube is so toxic. Nah, don't blame the black sector of seeing through your bullshit, bitch. You can't control the shit over here. That's why you don't like it over here. That you can barely get any type of support and unity on this platform to begin with. Then why are you here? But then again, you look at all of the 
So I think it's like harder to um, get support here because of that. But it's hard to get support here because you you. As far as uh, TikTok and Instagram. Oh, food. <laughs> I got to care. The reason why I have to care is because you want attention. Okay. You got to think of it like a business. I'm a business owner and I'm an entrepreneur. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'm a content creator too. That's one of my sources of income, right? And Sean, sure, that's why I was like, I, I, I left away from YouTube for such a long time because I wasn't, I was like, maybe I'm just fired from YouTube. <laughs> you're, you're fired. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, I think you two fired me. <laughs> how how do we look at songs already different? That's what that's that's what I think people are thinking. Like how how like you know, and that's what you know. Each of my videos should be about. I don't know. Do my um, true crime videos, my money crime videos that I was doing before my new channel. To, to do yeah, you need to do a true crime video and figure out who stole your hairline and your edges. Nowadays, I'm kind of busy. Yeah, success stories. Busy driving Uber. That's, that's what they want me to do. Six, the only other person I kept seeing on the internet all the time. I knew who he was. Then no longer do it. What made them stop? What made them quit? What made them? What else are they? Doing? God, the bitch is so fucking boring. I don't know. I can't say follow your passion because because sometimes your passion you're not that good at. But then if you keep like you sing, but I don't think that I can sing good enough to be able to. How did they get this? Um, my shorts ain't nothing but my TikToks. Yeah, I gotta work on that. I'll work on it. I promise. I work on my weight. Um, Cause I'm never. You can't work on shit. You ain't working on the goddamn thing, bitch. You, you, you ain't working on shit. It, ex, except being a piece of shit, mother to a delayed child. Never been this big before. Like I never. Uh, Stuff for lasagna. I put some cheese on top. But now my stomach, like I'm having stomach issues too. Cause you're growing a second stomach. My stomach, like first of all, I'm not even supposed to be consuming dairy. Or like meat. Like, I'm the type of person, I don't really. It's not supposed to be eating this stuff. But anyway, that's how I ended up eating more, more stuff like that. And. <laughs> like, how could I have been so kind and so nice to someone? And to hear how he spoke about me once the relationship was over. He told the truth. The way that he spoke so negatively about me, I just couldn't believe that he even thought those things. You know what I mean? Because I was like so sweet to him and so nice. But but when he fixed his mouth to talk about me, he said a whole bunch of negative stuff. And so, which happened to be true. Oh yeah, I lost my confidence. I mean, it makes sense. You 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 think that someone is better. I just gotta figure out what to do. Uh, Kill yourself for real than be myself <laughs> I don't mean like the talent part I mean like the business part I'm then disappoint myself if obviously the business part ain't work you're still in the fucking hotel I don't accomplish those things because I, I couldn't keep anything down really so I could barely eat any food I was really the way that wait a minute a fat bitch said she could barely eat any food God damn. I am now where I'm having like my stomach issues where I can't eat. I can't eat. What can I eat no more? I can't drink milk. Right. How is your fat ass sitting up there saying that you can't eat? Look, y'all, I ain't got, I ain't, hey, this shit done killed the last five brain cells I got left listening to this stupid bitch. So I ain't even listening to the last six minutes of this shit. This bitch popped on live, like I said, pretending like she on tour, plugging into Tesla. We know goddamn well it's Friday, and she didn't feel like dealing with that slow motherfucker squealing all the goddamn time. So now he in there squealing with goddamn Big Kathy. I'm out.